everybody. Welcome to Lockbar Knits, my knitting podcast. I'm Kelly, your hostess, and I'm coming to you from a cloudy, kind of cold uh, Nova Scotia, Canada. And this is episode 98, maybe? <laughs> Thereabouts. Uh, I am... Um, I am, I'm, pff, pff, really? <laughs> I can't tell which side this is supposed to go on there. Anyway, <laughs> welcome everybody. Uh, this is my new mug from My Little Shop Canada. I don't think I had this the last time to show you. Look at this like gentle little slope here. I love that. I bought my um, sister one of these as a surprise and hers had, hers had either a little heart or it was like a house with a heart in it, I forget. Um, and I love the shape of it so much. I went and ordered one and I got the one with the bicycle on it. Um, and if anybody watches this podcast on a regular basis, which by the way, Welcome back to all the uh, returning viewers. Thanks so much for coming by. And uh, thanks so much for the new viewers for checking us out. We have surpassed the 700 mark. What? Uh, so thanks everybody for checking us out. So if uh, you are, oops, a regular viewer, you know, uh, or if you watched the last episode or two, I was freaking out a little because President's Choice had stopped carrying my favorite brand of tea, which was the President's Choice Lemon Thriller. Because I like a lemon tea. I don't want a mild lemon taste. I want that lemon to slap me in the face and say, hey, I'm here. <laughs> and uh, the last two months I've been there at the grocery store and they've had no lemon thriller. Every other kind, fully stocked, no lemon thriller. So I was getting a little <laughs> worried that they'd stop making it. But when I got my groceries last week, they had some and I literally bought like two or three boxes of it. <laughs> so it's still hot. So I'm going to let it cool over here. Uh, but this is episode 90, I think it's 98. I think. Anyway, I do have stuff to show you. Uh, I remember, remember <laughs> when I said I'm going to have the, the stowaway sweater finished. And then I said I probably jinxed myself. Totally jinxed myself. Totally jinxed myself. But I did finish a sleeve. Uh, by the way, I am wearing my Pebble. I always want to say Pebble Beach. I think it's Pebble Cove. Um, pullover by Marie Green, who is Olive Knits, who is also the designer of the Stowaway Chevron pullover. Uh, so I was determined to at least <laughs> finish, I was determined to finish it and then I got sidetracked and I will show you why. <laughs> so I did get one sleeve done. Now, as I was kind of knitting this sleeve, because I, the yarn I'm using is Knit Picks, Wool of the Andes in there amber heather colorway which that's the tag and then this is the the ball so it's this beautiful kind of burnt um kind of like a burnt orange color uh and then i don't know if you can see it up close i don't know um you can kind of see the variegations in the color i love this colorway um this is like one of my favorite colors, period. So as I, but when I did a swatch, I didn't get gauge. So I had, I think my gauge was too big or too little. Now I forget. So I had to kind of adjust the sizing. I think it was too, my gauge was too, uh, short, whatever. I don't, I don't know the terminology. Uh, so I decided to go up a size, but down 
a needle. Um, so I end up knitting, normally like with this one, I knit the small, but the, the I think it called 4DK, but I used a sport weight. This is what I used for this one. And it is, I want to say Wool we'll of the Andes. That's not right. I don't think that's right. <laughs> Andy and Heather. Echo Andy and DK Wool. Um, and that's by Estelle Yarns. So that's, so this is really, um, now I think it calls itself a DK. And if I had my glasses on, I could probably tell you for sure. <laughs> it's 350 meters per hundred grams. So to me, that's not really, that's a little, oops, there it goes. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> um, Oh my god. Look, again, really, I don't know which side this is supposed to be going on. <laughs> so you can kind of see. It's, to me, not quite the thickness of what, like, a true DK would be. So, uh, but when I knit... I think I adjusted the um, that back there, the needle size, so I ended up getting gauge, or I was, yeah, I think I got gauge when I adjusted the needle size. So I did this in a small, but I couldn't for the life of me. I tried a few things, and I just couldn't get the gauge that this sweater called for. So I figured, well, you know. <laughs> Let's try this. So I went up a size and I went down a needle size and I didn't swatch and I probably should, like I could do a gauge swatch just based on what I have here. But when I try it on, it does fit. Um, but this, the arm was looking, now I do like my arms, like I have kind of bigger upper arms, so I don't like anything to be too tight on it because it just feels uncomfortable um and then you feel like you're just like you feel like a sausage um but this one was looking like a little not too big but it was looking roomy and i thought i don't want it to be kind of baggy down here because here's here's my problem is that i've got like bigger upper arms but my wrists are like Skinny as I'll get out. Like I can like, I have small hands and I can like wrap my hand around and still cover my nails. So I've got like really puny wrists. Um, so I didn't want to feel like it was swimming on my arm. Um, so as I was kind of doing the decreases, I realized I'm going to have to decrease, um, every I think I I think I missed the decrease here uh but I instead I think it was every five rows they say to decrease or seven I forget what it is now probably depending on what size you're doing um and I did the decreases every I started off every five and then when I got to here I thought I don't think that's going to be decreasing enough. So then I started going every four. So when I got to here, I'm like, I'm probably more than halfway down the sleeve and it's still pretty wide. So at that point I started decreasing um, every three until I got to here. You can see that one there. And then I was like, mm, <laughs> then I think I started decreasing every two <laughs> and that worked out fine and I so I kept the markers in because I'm gonna have to then try to replicate it on the next sleeve um and I did kind of keep notes in the pattern I was like okay when I got to here I started blah 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 so I have that as a reference too uh so I did end up then I did the uh three by to ribbing on the cuff. So now I just have 
Oops, where am I? I still have the neckband to do, which uh, I think I'm putting it off because I just don't want to have to pick up all of these stitches, which is stupid. It's probably going to take me like maybe 10 minutes to do whatever. Um, but it's just, I, I hate, I hate picking up stitches. Um, cause I'm always paranoid. Well, and with good reason, I'll get like, you know, like I'll get this much done and I'm like, well, this part looks really neat, but this part looks sloppy. So I always have to watch a tutorial before I do it. And then I usually <laughs> stop and watch the tutorial again before I get too far. Cause I'm like, it's starting to look sloppy. What am I doing wrong again? Cause I can't seem to remember what the tutorial said to do. Um, so I'm kind of thinking that I might do the neckband next just to get it done and get it over with. Cause I just have the feeling once I get that done, I'm just going to power through on the sleeve. But if I do the sleeve, I'm going to put off doing this, the neckband because I'm going to be like, I just don't want to pick up all those stitches. Uh, so yeah, but it is a Boat. I think I measured it against this one and you can't really see because <laughs> not far enough back. Yeah, I can't get back far enough, but it's literally, it just, it hits my hip bone. It's maybe like that much longer than this one, which to me was the perfect length. And I don't know, I don't know how well, this, I don't know if uh, Wool of the Andes is, is a super wash yarn. So it may not stretch as much. I'm trying to see if they've got, it says 100% Peruvian Highland Wool. It doesn't say anything about being super wash. Um, so I'm going to say, and it doesn't feel super wash. It's got that kind of wooly feel to it. Um, so yeah, I am going to guess this is like more, not super wash. Let's <laughs> see. Uh, anyway, so I, I really, really want to get this done. Maybe I say this, I think I said something similar the last time, but um, and I jinx myself, so maybe I shouldn't say it, but I'm going to say it. I'm going to try to pick up the stitches, neck stitches before the next podcast. Now I got like, I had to cut my own bangs. <laughs> segue, segue to the hair. So, okay. There are some things that I'm really good at. And then there are other things that I am not could that like I can't apply any I can't apply eyeshadow to save my life and I cannot cut my bangs straight so it they're supposed to be on a slant <laughs> I just honestly I just I just hack the crap out of them so so <laughs> I should just try to tuck them under and just forget I had bangs uh, I I'm going to try to get the neck thing done this week um or like the stitches picked up this week and then kind of work on it and try to get that part done before the next podcast but i don't know if i'll have time to do the picking up of the stitches because i'm doing a wholesale order for my business which is lock bar knits and i have to do the last bit of that this weekend to get that done so i don't know if i'll have time i may just have time for kind of simple mindless projects so that is the stowaway chevron which the chevron part i didn't do it was like chevron detailing up the side um by Magre Magre <laughs> magreen <laughs> marie green from olive knits so that is where i am with that that's in my fringe supply town bag which they don't make anymore i don't think I don't even, I don't even know if Fringe Supply is still in business or if they just stopped making bags. I'm not sure. I don't know. I love my Thriller tea. So next up is the half and half wrap. 
So I am making steady progress on this. So last episode, I'd mentioned how I was getting like a lot of pain kind of in my thumb area. And I was going to look on Carson Deemer's, uh, look through his book to get some exercises that he suggested. So he had some really good um, exercises and I started doing those and I'm still doing them. And within like a day or two, when I first did them, one was the, was like you held your hand out like that and you put your thumb in and you kind of like stretch it. So when I do that, I can feel it pulling like all the way up here. Uh, and then there was a couple others, but, uh, I could tell when I did it on this hand, which wasn't sore, I don't get any stretching up here. So I was like, okay, so I kind of know where the problem <laughs> is. Um, so even now, if I, if I've been knitting a bit and I do it, I can feel it pulling, but if I do it regularly, then I'm not feeling that pulling as much. Like right now, after I've done it that first time and I go like that, I can't feel it pulling. Um, but there's a couple of other ones that he suggested in the book, so I've been doing those. And I do them um, several times through the day. And if I'm knitting, I'll stop and take a break and I'll do like, just do a couple of, it just takes a couple minutes. Um, and I find my, I haven't been having any of the pain that I was having before. So if any of you, uh, have the chance to get that book, I think it's called Knitting Ergonomically, but it's Carson Deemers. And, uh, it is, it's ex expensive. It's like a big hardcover book and it covers not just like your hands, it covers, um, like your sitting, your posture, or like everything, like head to toe. And um, a lot of really good exercises. It explains things like what causes different things and blah, 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 blah. But it is so worth, worth every penny. I'm so glad I bought it. So uh, one thing, that was just another segue. We're segueing all over the place today. Uh, the Half and Half Wrap by Pearl Soho, which is a free pattern, if anybody, um, has been living under a rock and hasn't heard about it. So, if you're new, my Half and Half Wrap, you basically take, uh, one half of, it's like two triangles, um, but you do short rows so that you do one end of the triangle and then you kind of, like, go and you do the other and they're connected. Um, and you do like one half one color, one half the other color. But because I ran out of yarn on the gray half, my gray half is kind of more of a striped. This looks brown, but it's actually a gray brown. Uh, then there's the regular gray. And then there was the gray that was from a different dye lot. And then the regular gray again. So. This thing is massive. Like, I can't even see what you're seeing right now because you can't see through this thing, but <laughs> it's massive. So I started, the other thing too that I discovered is, and I don't know if this will show up very well. Let me just get, um, but let's see, this might be a good way to show it if it shows up. I don't know if you can see all the like little fuzzy <laughs> bits. Like there's parts of it um, that almost look like it's pilling, <laughs> which is probably like, here's a section. I don't know if it'll show up very well, but it's actually starting to pill. Now, I don't know what this yarn was, because uh, it was deep, deep, deep stash. <laughs> and um, I didn't have, it was balled up or uh, caked up and I didn't have the label. So I have no idea. I thought I had enough because I thought it was like fingering white 50 gram balls. And I had, should have had enough fingering weight 
yarn <laughs> to do the half, but you know, clearly I didn't. So, um, I don't know what it is. It may possibly have a cashmere content to it. It's very soft, like, like crazy soft. Um, and I do find the cashmere yarn will pill faster than like, um, 75-25 or 80-20 sock yarn. So, um, and then this actually is llama from, um, Illimani Echo Llama. So that's, I do know what that one is because <laughs> that was, <laughs> that was the uh, yarn to be added later. <laughs> uh, but uh, the second half is done in uh, Knit Picks Stroll Tweed in their Barn Door Heather colorway. So I have this much done. Let's see if I can. <laughs> I don't know. I've got this much done so far, and I've got kind of well, this much left to do. So I would say I'm close to being halfway done the second side. Now, what's, where did you go? Where's my other? There it is. Okay, wait. <laughs> there we go. Okay. So, um, this is a super addictive knit. If you haven't knit one, um, I highly recommend it's just one of those mindless projects. It's great for like TV watching, um, or podcast watching, or just like sitting on the couch, zoning out, while you're knitting projects. I love it. Uh, I would make another one. I may make another one just because number one, it's, um, it is a fantastic way to use up stash. Like if you've, and you know what? I mean, technically, as I discovered, <laughs> you don't necessarily have to do <laughs> two Complete color is like one half, one half. You could, you could stripe it. You could pretty much do anything you wanted. Um, I think it might be interesting to tr stripe it and see how that turns out. Um, I don't know where the yarn ball, oh, there it is. <laughs> um, so I think I will do another one. And um, I may do that one as a gift. Christmas is coming. I think my sister would really like something like this. Um, my sister, uh, the other thing too is that gray yarn. <laughs> it's like, it sheds like my golden retriever sheds. Like I now have <laughs> super, super uh, sheddy bits on me. So, um, don't wear black while I <laughs> don't wear black when I wear it. Um, yeah, but I would definitely, I definitely make myself another one. I definitely make uh, one for her. So I may do that. I may do that. Um, and use up. I'm. <laughs> I am determined to start using up my stash because I. Um, and the thing about this is it's really good because you can use up like two whole sweaters quantity of yarn on, on this project. <laughs> so, um, that's, that's a good way to use up stash because I keep adding to my stash and I have discovered that if I tell myself I'm not going to buy any yarn, the first thing I do is I go overboard on buying yarn. Now, when I say overboard, I don't actually for feel like that's a real thing. I mean, really, can you have too much yarn? You can, you can have too much yarn. I have too much yarn and I don't care, <laughs> but I do want to start using up because I bought like all this 
beautiful yarn and I want to knit it all and then I find more beautiful yarn and <laughs> it's, it's a rogue fuzzy. And then, uh, you know, I um, want to knit that too. So anyway, that's my, that's my story. So now I am going to show you. I have half finished objects. So my slouchy, nope, my loose sock by, I want to say casual fashion queen. Um, and I sort of, I sort of followed the first part of the pattern. And then when I got to the heel, I switched over to my regular vanilla sock pattern. It is by Sheena McNeely of Casual Fashion Queen. So she used um, two balls of yarn to do the slouchy socks, but I did not. I used, um, I think too, that kind of depends on how long you want to make it. Like I wanted it to be slouchy, but I didn't want it to be too, too slouchy that I felt like it was too big for me. Okay. So also I'm not a tall person, so that probably would factor in obviously. Um, so this is what it looks like. So if I unslouch it, <laughs> there uh it's kind of like this long and then if I slooch it up it's like that which is perfect for me because uh like I said I'm five two oh my god these babies are gonna drive me um so I, I do not have a long leg like if I go like this this is <laughs> this would be probably where my kneecap would start um so yeah, so this is the perfect amount of slouch. So this is knit in uh, my own yarn, Lockbar Knits. Uh, this is the September Morn colorway um, that I did. This is the version from 2018. Um, I've mentioned before, I do the, take the exact same colors and then each fall, I'll take the exact same colors and I may distribute them a little differently or just mix it up a little bit. Um, Although this is probably my favorite version and I may try to recreate that this fall because I love it, love it, love it. Uh, and this is in the cashmere gush base. So I'll show you so how the yarn kind of knits up. I love it. I love it. Da -da. So that's, I'm going to, I haven't cast on the second one yet because I actually finished this last night. Um, so like I said, I did the, uh, I kind of followed the amount of stitches to be cast on that she suggested and she has several sizes. There's, uh, there is child, small, medium, large, and I think there's an extra large as well. So, um, I use that and the ribbing that she has in the pattern to do this part. I made it as long and that's the thing too. You can adjust uh, the length according to what you want. And then once I got to the decrease, uh, cause then I did that part and then I just switched over and did my own, like the Aya Partridge heel that I do, just my regular vanilla sock. But when I got to the toe, and I think I'm going to do this going forward with my um, socks, is normally I would make kind of more of a pointed toe. Like I think I usually get to about 14 stitches and then I do the toe. But I actually kind of like the wider toe. Um, so I think I'm going to do that going forward on my socks. So... It looks so skinny. I was a little worried because it looks so skinny that it wouldn't slouch, but it does. So I, I, was, I was like, the ribbing's going to hold it up, but it does. The 
the ribbing helps it hold its shape, but it doesn't keep it from being slouchy. So um, that was really, I enjoyed doing that. Again, it was like a nice kind of mindless knit. And I did go up a needle size. I usually do um, size zero, which I think is two millimeter. And this one was, I did these in my Addy Turbo Lace ones, and these are size 2.25. So I didn't go up like a whole lot, but just a little bit so that it would have a little extra slouch to it. And it fits perfect. So that's the, I still have, I have two, two of the, two balls of this. Uh, I am not going to need two balls. I'm easily going to be able to make um, one pair out of one ball of yarn. Um, because, and I think again, it's like just the size of my foot and my leg. Because I take a size, I'm about a size five and a half in the foot. Um, so, yeah, I'll still have. Now, nope, wait, da, da, da. so I still have like a full one. But what I do really like, number one, those slouchy socks are so crazy comfortable. Um, the other thing I like is that it's going to use up almost an entire ball of yarn. I think I'll still have some yarn left over, but not like, uh, like when I make a pair of socks, I have half the ball left over. Um, which is fine. It's not like I can't find another project to use it in or use it in a scrappy project. But then you have all these scrappy balls here <laughs> kicking around too. And it's like, what am I going to do with that? Um, so it is nice to actually use up an entire ball of yarn on a pair of socks. And the slouchy socks are so crazy comfortable that I think that may end up being my go-to <laughs> for a lot of my socks. So that was my half finished object. And then the reason that my, um, that <laughs> I didn't finish my stowaway sweater, like I said, was if you follow me on Instagram and all my um, links for all that stuff are just down below. I said I wasn't going to cast on the Ranunculus sweater, um, which is by Midori, let's see if I can say this right, Nick Cafe Midori, who is Midori. Mm. Where are you? Here we are, maybe, maybe, maybe. Uh, Midori Hiroshi? I don't know if I'm saying that right, but it's Nick Cafe Midori. And, oops, let me just, so I am making this version here. Uh, there's, let me put my glasses on so I can actually see what I'm pointing at. <laughs> so, you know. Um, so yeah, so if you can see here, this is like the ribbed neck, it's a little higher. And then you also have the option to do kind of like a loose, I don't know if I'm getting the thing here, like kind of a looser neck. And then you can do um, short sleeves, you can do long sleeves. So the only thing I'm, I'm going back and forth on what, uh, what sleeve length to do. I like a longer sleeve. Like I was thinking of maybe doing like more of a three quarter. I think this would kind of be considered more almost bracelet length. I was thinking of bringing it up from here to maybe like about there, like sort of like just kind of mid arm maybe uh, for the summer. But because of the construction, I don't know how well it's going to show here. 
on the longer sleeve i find like it's a very short connection between where the sleeve hole is and like where the body starts so when you lift up <laughs> get fuzz on me when you lift up your arm it's like the whole sweater kind of comes with you which is fine because i was planning on using it to wear over um like a lo long dresses and that kind of thing. So it's not like I'm going to be flashing, you know, everybody. Um, but I just don't know if I'm going to find that annoying or not. And I'm sure that there's a way, like what I could do is, put my glasses back on. <laughs> what I could do is maybe wear the detailing in the yoke stop here if i could just jump up where the armhole starts and then just knit the body longer than what it says um but the other option is too that if you do a shorter sleeve um you don't seem to have that issue as much but the thing is, is that my office is really cold, so I kind of like having a longer sleeve. So, I don't know. We'll see. I do have enough yarn to do the um, longer sleeve version, so we shall see. So, I'll show you the yarn first that I'm using. I'm using Sheep Soft, which is my glasses on again. I'm just going to leave these on. I'll leave these on while I show you this. Um, this is a 50 gram ball with 295 meters. I don't know what that is in yards. <laughs> um, but it is a blend of premium heritage breed wools grown and spun in the UK. It's called Sheep Soft. And this is the Grassington cactus color so this is the yarn um but i love i love this color and i think i showed this uh acquisition um a couple episodes back possibly so i have so far now at first when I was doing this it was feeling like really fiddly because you cast on first off I had to do a um oh crap what, what's that called not continental cast on what's that cast on called <laughs> it's the one I hate because it requires a crochet hook um chained method is what she's calling it uh but once I kind of, I watched the tutorial for it, um, and then I started it and did it wrong, so I watched the tutorial again. And on the third try, I got it right, uh, and then it was fine. But it's very, it felt very fiddly because, like, I was on very small needles. Um, but once I got going, I was fine. <laughs> So this is what I've got done so far. And it's got some techniques in it that I, I haven't really done before. Or if I have, it's only been like once and it was a long time ago and I don't remember. <laughs> so this is where we're at so far. Um, and it's kind of hard to see the detailing because I what I did was I am using like when when you're making it, it's it's a one-sized oversized pattern. So, and then they have a separate modification pattern for uh, if you've got a larger bust size, which I don't have that. <laughs> so, um, it's the needle size they suggest is six millimeter and then five millimeter for like doing the sleeves. But I actually um, went down a size because I want it to be, it says lace or light fingering 
fingering yard and the degree of transparency depends on the weight of the yard. So I wanted it to be kind of like uh, gauzy and transparent, but not completely because I could do want to wear it to work. And if I wanted to wear it kind of like a, um, like a tank top or something like that underneath, you know, I still want to be able to wear it to work, but I also wanted it to be warm enough in the office where the office is so cold. And I thought if it's a little too gauzy, that that might not work. So this is what we got. And I got to tell you, this thing is knitting up fast. Like once I get to the body part, I think this thing's going to just fly. Um, and it's very addictive. If you've never made one before, um, I'm going to be making, I think I'm going to be probably making quite a few. And I've heard that from other podcasters who have made it and they have three now. Um, it's just, I don't know what it is about it because <laughs> there's points where I felt really frustrated, but I couldn't stop knitting. Um, and I think the frustration was just trying to, there were a couple of um, pattern instructions that I didn't quite understand. Although then once I did understand them, I was like, oh, and yeah, so it was probably more me than the actual pattern. Um, but I highly recommend this pattern. I'm holding it kind of upside down. It's, uh, and this yarn is really so soft. At first I was like, is it gonna be like itchy scratchy? But I don't think so. <laughs> it's so, it's so soft. Um, so yeah, so I'm probably gonna work on this a little today um, after I get the yarn dyeing done. So that I just, I told myself I wasn't going to, but it was just calling my name. And I thought, you know, this, I would like to get this done really quickly so that I could wear it once the weather, you know, the weather's starting to get warmer and I want to wear, you know, my summer dresses, but most of those are sleeveless. Um, and in the office, it's not really going to work because I'll be too cold. So I thought if I use this and the other yarn that I have, I have this in blue and I'm trying to remember where I put it. I have this in blue and kind of like a soft uh, rose color. So I think I'm probably, <laughs> I'm gonna have a few of these too. So that's that, that was my new cast on for the week. So that's, uh, that is all the knitting content. Oh yeah. yeah. So I did, um, surprisingly enough, uh, I did have some yarn acquisitions. So there, here we go. So my yarn store, The Loop, which um, during the lockdown have gone online, but um, as I'm sure you all know, the lockdown on any independent business has been really hard and I want to support my um, local yarn store because I love going there. Mimi is fantastic. Um, and it's just a great store. So if you do not have a local yarn store, um, feel free to go to the loop and I'll leave the number here because the yarn she has there is fantastic. She is a just plethora of knitting knowledge. So if you're ever curious saying, I'd like to knit the sweater, I'm not sure what to knit it out of. She will let you know. So they have all kinds of stuff in the shop. So I'll leave the link there and you guys can go check it out. Um, but I decided that I want to knit the classic sweater, which I forgot to bring the pattern. No, actually I didn't print the pattern off yet. Um, but it's a free pattern by Aspastrico and it's got like a turtleneck and it's made with, um, with mohair. So I uh, was looking, I have the yarn and I'm going to go, going deep stash. No, actually it's not that deep, it's fairly new. <laughs> That's not it. Let me just see where, here it is. So I have got uh, Ultra Fine Wool from Barocco and it's in this kind of medium to dark gray color. So I didn't have the shade of gray or enough of the shade of gray. Oh, I have the hiccups now. 
I think I get the hiccups every time I podcast. I must be sucking in a lot of air when I talk. I don't usually talk this much. <laughs> so anyways, I didn't have enough of the dark gray um, mohair to do the sweater. So I went on to the loop and they have this kid silk uh, mohair that is made specifically for them if i'm remembering correctly yes uh so it's custom dyed for the loop by good vibrations which i have used their yarn um for sock knitting and it is beautiful uh so this is uh warm pewter and it is 50 grams and it's 430 meters which is 400 and 70 yards. So I got three of this and I'm going to pair it with this. So I like that this shade has different tones of gray in it than this one because I think that is going to create kind of like a gentle marling look to it that I think is going to be fabulous. But <laughs> anyway, as I was online looking at the different uh, shades that they had with uh, Good Vibrations Kid Silk, and um, and this is custom dyed for the loop, so you can only get this at the loop. They have this one, which is called, and I can never say this uh, correctly, Blue Fescue. Fescue. So this has these beautiful tones going through it. And let's see if we can show this. I don't know. I don't know if you can tell the tones on that. I do not know how to make this thing out of focus yet. <laughs> I keep saying this, I think, every episode. And I'm like, I really gotta learn how to do that. I know there's a way. But then I thought, oh wow. I wonder what that would look like together. So now Now I have a quandary. Do I want to lighten up the gray? Or do I want to kind of marl it with a pewter gray? I don't know. <laughs> and then the other option is too, is that I could make myself two of these sweaters because the sweater is gorgeous. And I have, um, oh my God, they didn't. So this is, oh yeah, you know what? So this is, uh, I think it's called Mayak. Um, look at that. Oh, I have like three skeins of this. And these are big skeins too. Um, look at that. Oh, oh, that's what I'm going to do. Here we go. Two classic sweaters. <laughs> Yay! Oh, that is nice. Oh, that's that's totally happening. So uh, that may be once I finish the ranunculus. I think I might cast that on um, just because I want to have it ready to wear for late fall. And it's kind of a bit of a longer sweater, although I may make it a little shorter so that it's just coming past a little past the hip bone and I think it's got a high low hem like the split and then the high low hem so the back's a little longer so yeah so we'll see <laughs> there are a couple of other quick sweaters I would like to do um I want to do the stripey um sweater that actually I think it's just called stripes that Andrea Mowry has because I think that would be a great way to use up some of my yarns, um, like leftover bits. So I may do that. So we'll see, I don't know. So it's just too many sweaters and not enough time. <laughs> so that is really about everything. I'm trying to look around, make sure I'm not forgetting anything. But yeah, I think that was everything. So um, life stuff, there's not too much going on because we're still in lockdown. Um, 
We, my husband and I both got our first vaccinations. My stepson goes and gets his on Wednesday. He's 17, so he'll get his on Wednesday. And then, um, you know, they're starting to slowly open some things up, um, but still with a lot of restrictions in hand so that we don't get a spike in cases again. And um, yeah, so there's really not a whole lot going on. I did finish The Starless Sea by Erin Morgenstern that I was um, reading and it was fabulous. And then I was going to start another book, but my mom lent me The Book Thief by... Oh, I'm totally blanking. I got Marcus stuck in my head. Marcus something. I'll put it down here. It's been around for a while. Um, and my sister, it's my sister-in-law lent the book to her and then she lent it to me. So I have to get it back to my sister-in-law. So I'm sitting at the kitchen counter while my husband is ordering us a pizza and I just start reading it. I get totally sucked in. So now I put the other book away and then I'm going to read this one now. So it's the book thief by... I'll put it down here. <laughs> um, but it's really good. And uh, what else? I found a really good uh, workout um, site on YouTube, which has some fantastic videos. And here's what I love about them. There's no talking. <laughs> I don't, I just want like, just show me what the moves we're doing so I can follow along but I don't need a conversation. So this one is great. It's called Growing Anna Noss, I think. I'll do the link if you're looking for a good, I think she's from Germany, um, but she's in like just brilliant shape. All different kinds. So there's like workouts, there's like Tabata, there's HIT, there's um, workouts with weight, workouts with band, workouts just body weight, all the selection, different lengths. Um, and what she does is um, it just basically start with the warm up. There's no talking, but she'll show you the moves that's coming up in like a little, the little score box up here. And then uh, the timer is going over here for how long you do it. So um, it's really good. Like I was kind of looking through, <laughs> I like to watch, I like to watch them before I do them. Um, but they've got some really good ones, so highly recommend that. I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna hopefully squeeze one in this weekend. But if not, I'm gonna start doing them on the days I work from home. I'm gonna do them on my lunch hour. So uh, yeah, so that's really about it. That's it. Uh, the running is still on hold. I think I want to get some of my muscle strength back before I start running again and see if that helps with the knee issue that I was having. We'll see. Anyways, that's about it. Uh, so I'm going to let you guys go. Thanks so much for uh, stopping by. And I hope you guys are having a lot of good knitting time for yourselves. And I will see you in a couple weeks. And until then, happy knitting. See ya.